Welcome to Compassion Sunday. You're joining us for another week of Live Full, Die Empty. We're so excited that you joined us. Now, before we get started, please make sure that you like, share, and comment this stream. It's one of the easiest ways that you can play your part here at Compassion Online.
Come on, can we stretch our hands to heaven today? Oh, so worthy you are. Oh, so worthy you are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. Compassion, Pastor John. Hey, I want to remind you that this summer here at Compassion, we have some new C group story. We have C groups all throughout the year, and we've got quite a few that are taking place this summer. See, we believe here at Compassion, it's not about just a row, but it's about circles. It's about building relationships and friendships and doing life together. So do us a favor, go to our website or go to our next step wall and look for the upcoming C groups we have here at Compassion Church. God bless. Hey, Compassion. Hey, we want to thank you so much for watching our service and being a part of our online campus. Listen, I want you to know that maybe you can't be here in person, but that doesn't mean that you can't be a part of Compassion Church online. There's, there's three areas that you can get involved. First is you can get involved with our tech. If you're a techie, now I'm not a techie, so we need more techies around here, but if you'd like to be a part of the tech side, the online campus, and maybe have one of the social media, whatever it may be, We'd love for you to help out in that area. Or maybe you're an engager. You love to be on online and watch the service. We need individuals that will help us engage as new people are coming online and watching our service. Or the third area that you can help out is follow-up. That's someone that has come and has joined our online campus that we need individuals to follow up with them so that they would feel not only the love of the Christ, but the love of a church. Even though they can't be in building, you're still part of a church and we want you to know that we love you. So guys, if you would like to be a part of Compassion Online, then we invite you to come. There'll be a place down at the bottom that you can click and you can join on to be a part of Compassion Church Online. 
We love you. Bless you. See you next week. We are so thankful for the way that you give here at Compassion Church. From the money, to the way you serve, to the gifts that you use, they all play a part in furthering the kingdom. I promise you we couldn't do this without you, so thank you. As we're giving here, we just want to make it as easy as possible. So a couple ways that you can give are one. Go to CompassionChurch.cc slash give and you can give securely there online or you can text 84321. Make sure you text give and then select Compassion Church Wichita Falls. Jesus, we just thank you so much for what you're doing here at Compassion Church. I thank you that you are stirring up hearts of givers, not just givers of our finances, but givers of our gifts and our talents and our callings. God, I just thank you for rising that up within us. We pray that you will take this offering and you will stretch it farther than we could ever imagine. God, we just give it to you and we ask you to come in and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So we're going to continue. I spent a little time giving you some announcements. We're going to continue today. We're going to live full and die empty. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's live full and die empty. In the last few weeks, we've been talking about living full of purpose and potential. We've been talking about being, um, we've been talking about uh, t expanding our territory. We, we believe in living full. Now let's just empty it all out and leave it all here. How about that? We got to be all in. We got to be emptied out. There's no more halfway. We, when we get in front of the Lord of Lord and King of Kings, we need two words for him to say to us, well done. That's what we're looking for. So if we have anything that we're holding back, you know what? We did an injustice to him. Man, y'all going to meddle today. Y'all get ready for it. So let's look at John 15 together. How about this? John 15. We're going to read a few verses. I encourage you to go back and read the entire chapter of John. But John 15, beginning of verse 4, it says, Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Father, I thank you today for your words. It gives us life. I pray right now, Lord, we, we set aside of anything in our minds, the things that happened this week, things that's going to happen this coming up week. We just want to be in your presence. We want to be different. Lord, I pray right now that your word is, just speaks to us and gives us life like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. So what's this right here? What is this? Come on, you shout it out. What is this? It is a phone. It is a cell phone. That's what this is. It's a cell phone. So let me just see if I got any honest people in here. Does it, can anybody tell me, and let's see if you're going to own up to this, is there anybody that says, I am, I am a phone attached to a wall years old? Anybody? 
Yeah, some of you are like, this to a wall? That's just crazy, you know? Yeah, one, at one point in time, there was something attached to a wall, and there was a little cord. And you could do multiple things with those little cords. You could slap your brother with it as he's running by. You could have him jump rope. You could, like, twirl around and twirl back. You could do all sorts of things. There once upon a time was a wall, a phone that was attached to a wall. Did any of you, did any of you have the bag phone? The bag phone. I had a bag phone. It was the first cell phone. It was the first, one of the first cell phones I ever had. It was a bag phone. Nowadays, it, it, is, it is so big. It, you thought it was small, but it's so big that, that you, you would have to uh, register to go fly somewhere. You would have to check it in. That's how It was like about this big. It had all, all sorts of co- co- uh, cords to it. It was crazy. Isn't it crazy that this little phone right here has the capacity and the capability of what my first computer had, this little phone. And that joker was as big as this desk right there, that computer. It looked, took three guys to move it. It was crazy. We do a lot of communication with these things. We take notes, we text, we keep calendars. Mm, important dates, birthdays, anniversaries, we don't have to remember that anymore. Don't have to remember telephone numbers, it's just speed dial one, two, three, whatever it is. You can do whatever you want to with this. It's became a vital tool of our existence. Is there anybody that, like, if you leave it at home, you, like, go into a panic attack, and you're like, oh, i got to get back to the house. i got to find it. You know, like, let me borrow your phone to call my boss so (coughs) I'm sick. Oh, I found it. Oh, I got better all of a sudden. Anybody in here? You're like, my boss is watching. I can't do that. (laughs) What about this thing right here? What is this? It's a charger. How many people charge your phone every day? How many people are you like, I use my phone so much, I, I charge it every minute. I got to keep that, that. I got an emergency charger. I got six chargers in my car. I got chargers at people's house that I don't even know just in case I go over there so I can charge my phone. Is anybody like, man, if my phone isn't fully charged in the morning, I'm in a bad mood for the rest of the day. I'm like so edgy, it's like not having my first cup of caffeine. It's like, I'm I'm mad. You had to charge my phone. Then you start blaming people, those kids. Those kids just got, my husband didn't charge my phone. My wife didn't charge my phone. And then all along, you just realize it was, the charger was just unplugged from the power source. You're like, I can't believe it. So many opportunities with these devices, but it's nothing without the power. When your phone dies, it's useless. See, as we we live full and we die empty, we must stay fully charged and fully connected to him. That's what we have to do. We have to stay attached to the vine as we read the scriptures. We must remain in him. So for the next few minutes together, we're going to talk about what it looks to be fully charged and fully connected to him. We're going to talk about what looks to be fully charged and fully connected to him. Number one is this. Staying fully charged will build character so you can empty out compassion. Staying fully charged will build character so you can empty out compassion. That scripture in John says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. See, by remaining in him, it builds character in us. Because we're becoming more like him. The very definition of that word character says it's the distinctive qualities that make one recognizable as a person differentiated from others. We begin looking like him. That's our goal as believers is to look like him, to talk like him, to walk like him, to have the same desires that he has. We've got to be fully connected and plugged into him. Understanding that we can do nothing. There's nothing as believers. There's nothing we can do without him. There's nothing that we can accomplish about being separated from him. If you took a vine, if you took a a fruit, if you took a flower and you broke it off and you set it over here, it, it does nothing anymore except die. When we try to do things on our own, we try to do things on our own power. It's like using a broken charger cord. 
Mm, I had those at my house. So frustrating. So irritating. I gotta, you gotta, anybody with me? You gotta like move it around and circle it. You're just to see, because all you're listening for is that to go ding, and you're like, oh, charge. Okay, stop. Don't move. And you're like there all night long. But that's what it's like when we try to do things on our own. When you try to do things on your own, but eventually you, you can do it. You might be able to do it for a little while, but eventually the cord's going to stop working and the power's going to start working, running out of it. And without power, there's nothing that we can do. We must do everything to be more like Christ. The only way to do it is stay plugged in directly to the source, and that's him. You can fake character for a little while. I told you I felt like meddling today. You can fake character for a little while. For a little while, you just like that charger cord, you might be able to, to do a few things. You, but here's what I'll tell you today. Is that you got to be the same character as Jesus because eventually it'll come calling. Eventually, you can't buy character. You got to become character. You got to become like him. You can't, you can't, you can try to do this or that. But it's the character inside of you because you're plugged into him. And I tell you, it will come to call. You will have to own up to it. You will have to look at it and say, I've been trying to fake this entire time, but Jesus really ain't inside of me. I got to get plugged back in to the power. See, the heart change is what causes us to remain in him. I see people all the time that try to change because they try to do it on their own. They try to do it in their own power and in their own accord, and they fail time and time again. Why is that? It's because you're not staying plugged in to the source of power, which is Jesus Christ. You're not having a character change inside of your heart. You're remaining the same as the old man. He said, don't be like that old man no more. Put him aside. You can't do that anymore. you got to be new and meek because you're a new creation. But if I remain in him, what did he say would happen? We will bear fruit. Galatians chapter 5 tells us, verses 22 through 23, lets us know bearing fruit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. I'm not saying that we're all perfect, but you know what? So when we begin having the Spirit empower us, and when we begin living in a character like Him, we start demonstrating these, everybody can see. I can go to an apple tree and know it's not an orange tree. Why? Because I can see the fruit. When people come to you, do they know you're part of the world or do they know you're part of Jesus' house? I told you. Ooh, here we go. So as we're remaining in him, the spirit is working on the inside of us to keep us fully charged to be more like him. To build the character on in the inside of us. But we got to keep plugged in. We got to keep in our word. We got to keep praying. We got to keep connecting and ever not sometime. Do you ever pray and you don't stop talking? You got to listen every once in a while. A conversation is not one sided. That's a speech. If I want to hear and get understanding, I got to listen. I got to talk and I got to listen. We must remain connected to the vine so we can bear much. We must empty out everything inside of us to demonstrate the compassion to this world. The second way, this number two is this, stay fully charged compels you to empty out through connections. Staying fully charged compels you to empty out through connections. John 15, he said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Many times we like that back end of it, ask me whatever you want. But he said, the first part, you got to remain in me. And while I'm remaining in him, his words remain in me. There's one, I'll pay you later. As we're staying connected to Christ, we begin to take his heart and his mind. We begin to have his word bring life to us. Hebrews 4 tells us the word of God is alive and it's active. It will bring life to you. But you've got to remain plugged into it. You've got to stay plugged into the power source. You can't go do whatever you want to do and expect God's blessings to flow. 
See, that's a misconception in nowadays. I can do whatever I want to do and then pray that God blesses me. He has specific words, and his words were, remain in me. It's crazy. If I go out here and speed and get pulled over and get a ticket, and I pray to get out of the ticket, but the speed limit's posted, well, everybody else does it. It doesn't matter. It's the words. Man, I'm just filling the middle today. See, just as Jesus was compelled to empty out in his three years of ministry here on earth, he was connecting with everybody he could connect with. He didn't go stay away in a little hut somewhere. He didn't go get his own little cottage. He he wasn't ever alone. You say, well, that's Jesus. We are compelled to do the same thing. We We are transformed to be more in his likeness. Our heart is to imitate him. We are to imitate his heart. We have to have to desire to connect with people so they will know, so they can hear, so they can understand, so they can meet a Savior. If you're believing, if you're a believer and you're a follower of Christ, you should be compelled to connect with people. The devil's fought us way too long. He's fought us way too hard. He has got believers stopping. He has stopped believers from being compelled to share the gospel. He has attempted to divide the gospel in every way he can with lies. In 2 Timothy 4, it tells us there's going to be a day that the truth ain't going to be there anymore. People are going to rally around itching ears, but for us to keep speaking the truth in love. He has lied to you. And he has told you that you're not qualified to tell anybody anything. Guess what? You're not qualified. I'm not qualified. But I know the man who's inside of you, his name is Jesus Christ, and you are qualified. Because he lives inside of you. You're not righteous on your own. There's nothing that we can do to be on our own. He makes us righteous. You are qualified. You are called. You have a purpose in your life. And I know you heard that last week, but somebody didn't hear it too well. You're supposed to be stepping into your calling. And the calling that God has got on your life is follow me, remain in me, so you can go bear fruit for me. When we are not connecting with people, we are not committed to Christ. When we are not connecting with people, we're not committed to Christ. I know the world, oh, well, I'm an introvert, or I'm a, we have all these, uh, and, and, and please hear me when I say this. You may be, but the gospel is the gospel. And he said to go bear fruit, to go make disciples. I can't sit in a room by myself and do that, can I? I can't have community with myself. Sometimes I can, because I got a lot of voices up here. We have a whole meeting sometimes. That happens. But the healthy one is outside of us, having having a culture of community together. Because that's how we bear fruit, and that's how disciples are made, and that's how we multiply the kingdom of God. There's a story in Luke 14, and verses 15 through 24, and there's a large banquet that's happening. There's a banquet that's happening, and the, the master of the banquet has invited tons of people to come to it. And then he tells his servants, he says, hey, go tell them to come on in. It's all prepared. It's all ready. It's all there. And all of a sudden, when the servants go and say it's ready, they start making excuses. They have all kinds of crazy excuses. I've got to go watch the sun come up. That's how, that's how it is. You go back and read the story. That's not one of them, but there's, there's three different excuses they gave, but it's that kind of ironic. It's that, that's how far out it is. Uh, i got to watch the paint dry on the wall just in case. So they go make excuses. But just as the servant, but the master, he was fully committed to connect with people. Because the master was fully committed, in Luke 14, 23, the master told his servants, go out to the roads and countries, lanes, and compel them to come in so that my house will be full, so that my house will be full, so that my house will be full. 
Underline that again so my house will be full. Because he was fully, the master is fully committed to connecting people so his house may be full. Just as the servant was instructed, you and I are compelled to go get them because his house needs to be full. See, in 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 and 5 says this. It says, preach the word. It didn't say, hey, preacher on stage, preach the word. He's telling you, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instructions. But you, look at somebody and say, but you. But you, look at somebody on the other side and say, but you. But you, keep your heads in all situations, enduring hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Passionately pursue the cause of Christ and compel people to come in. That's what we've got to do. We've got to passionately pursue the cause of Christ. His very cause to be here on this earth was to bring people to him and to his Father. Psalms 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. The table is already set for us to bring people in. We just got to bring them in. The third thing is this. Stay fully charged empowers you to empty out by reproducing. Staying fully charged empowers you to empty out by reproducing. John 15, 16 says, you, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. Did you hear that? You, you didn't have nothing to do with it. I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my Father's name will give you. See, as long as your phone stays connected to the power outlet, it continues to keep a charge. It continues to work at full capacity. You can open as many apps as you want to. You can talk. You can play games. You can make phone calls. You can FaceTime. You can do all these things on your phone. And it will never will go down as long as you have it plugged into the power and to the source. Because you're connected to the power and source. As long as you are connected to the power and source of Jesus Christ, you can do anything. Too many of you are living in the lie that I can't because I don't have all my stuff together. That is a lie from the enemy. It is not based on you because if it's based on you, then you would get you to heaven. And you didn't die on a cross. You wasn't the son of God who took all your sins and my sins and put it on his shoulders and died on the cross and then resurrected on the third day. You can't do anything outside of him. That's the reason we have to remain plugged in to him because he's our power source. See, when you and I are connected to Christ, the Holy Spirit empowers us. See, John 14 tells us, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. This is Jesus talking. It's in red in your Bible. This is Jesus. He's telling us, if you believe in me, we'll do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater works, things than these. Because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Did you hear his words to you today? You will do the works Jesus had been doing. He said, what I've done, I've walked on water, I've healed, I, I've made the blind to see, I've seen people healed, I've seen the, de the dead raised. You'll, those things I was doing, you're going to go way past that. Because I'm going to the Father, and I'm going to empower you to do it. It freaks some of us out. We're like, oh, what? Here's the thing, let's just take the step of this, inviting somebody to church and telling them about Jesus. Let's take those small miracles and call them a win. You will do whatever Jesus had been doing, and you will do greater things. He is sitting next to his Father. Here on, he, he needs you and he wants you here on this earth to walk in the power he has placed inside of you. Better yet, he wants you on this earth to walk in the calling that he paid for that he's placed inside of you. He paid for that calling that's inside of you. He just didn't go, here you go, maybe a little. He paid for it on the cross. He empowered you. Verse 13, it says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
You may be thinking today, I've asked tons of times for God to do this and God to do that, and I've asked, and there's just nothing happening. I've asked him to get me out of the finances. I've asked him for the, my family to be together. I've asked him, and I've asked him. Maybe we haven't seen the miracles and the power because we have been asking the wrong questions. See, the empowerment that I'm talking about isn't for our own personal gain. If we are full of him, we empty out pride and the thoughts of ourself are gone. He said, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. It is not about our own gain. He will answer, he will, he will answer your prayers. But you, sometimes you got to step self out of the way and pray for somebody else. You may need a healing, but i got to pray for somebody else's healing. I may need a financial blessing, but what I've got to do is start tithing and start giving to other people too. That's where we're at today. We've been asking the wrong questions because we read this and we go, come on, sugar daddy, give it to me. We get that little lamp and we're just rubbing really hard and the genie's not popping out to answer all of our prayers. And we go, what's going on? Because it's not for us. Once he has saved us, he said, you got a mission. You have a call. I've empowered you to go do it. And that is to spread the gospel so nobody else goes to hell. Jesus commissioned us to reproduce. He told us to go and make disciples. He commissioned us. Jesus' time here on this earth, he spent was making disciples. So his words would continue and point people to God the Father. See, today, once again, you may be saying, I don't have anything to offer. It's the Christ that's inside of you that has everything to offer. See, I told you as we began all the things coming up in August. Sea groups, freedom, prayer, fusions. Bring somebody with you. You don't have to put a robe on and walk around and just follow me. Make it way too hard. Relax and say, come with me to the best place I've been in a while. You'll walk out changed because Jesus is here. I want you to understand that what you have inside of you, it's not meant to stay there. It's meant to be emptied out. I want you to notice three things as we're closing down here. I want you to notice three things, three words that were used multiple times in the scripture. And you go back, read John 15. I challenge you to do this, the first half of John 15. And it says, he says, remain in me. So what I want to say to you is stay fully charged. Stay fully charged in him. He said, remain in me. Stay fully charged in him. Stay plugged into him. He said, bear fruit. Be compelled to connect. Leave it all on the table. You got some people that God has entrusted you with at your job. They don't know Jesus and you need to invite them to see him through you. You better change that character. The third thing he says in here multiple times is ask whatever. Empty it out for God's glory. Empty it all out for God's glory. There is no glory. There's nothing. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. There's not a position in this world that, 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 that we should look at and go, oh, it all belongs to God. Live a life you were created to live, leaving nothing left to give. Live a life you were created to live, leaving, leaving here with nothing left to give. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe today you, you haven't been fully plugged in to the power source. Maybe today you haven't been fully committed to God the way you should be and the plan he has for your life and you're, 
today you say, I'm ready to live life to its fullest. I'm ready to be empty yet. I'm ready to put it all on the line. I'm being, I want to be compelled like never before to reach people. If that's you, say, I want to change the heart today. Lift your hand. I want to pray with you. Anybody out here, hands all over. I pray, Father, for them right now. I pray that you would, your Holy Spirit would bring that empowerment inside of them like never before. That you would, whatever is holding them back, whatever, whatever they've been told, whatever they hear, whatever they, that's been told, the devil said they are not qualified, that they're unqualified, that we, they know right now in you they are qualified in your power we're believing that and we claim that with every head bowed and every eye closed last question for you if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior it is so simple today you got to admit that you're a sinner believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he died on the cross and he rose the third day for me and confess him Lord of your life if today you say, I don't know where I would spend eternity before I leave here today, and I want to be plugged in and empowered by that God you were talking about, I don't want to die and go to hell. If you want to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ today, just lift your hand. Is there anybody out here that says, I want to give Jesus my life? Just lift your hand. I want to pray with you today. I see one. I see two. Is there anyone else out here that says, give, I want to give Jesus my life? I see three. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Four. Four people have given their life, you're going to give their lives to Jesus today. Here, you are our family. And as a family member, like Krista said, we are together. We don't leave you behind. So everybody, church, let's pray this prayer together. Pray after me. Say, dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart, into my life. Please forgive me of all my sins and all my ways. I repent and ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Give Jesus some praise. We are so happy that you joined us today. Here at Compassion, we value family, which means we value you. If there's any way that we can be praying for you and believing with you for something, please make sure that you let us know. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you here next Sunday.